CO control or car park ventilation is another one of those control strategies that is often not quite right. Now, it's not as bad as the CO2 control strategy, which is always wrong, but uh, car park ventilation is, you know, at least half the time there's something wrong with it. So in this video, we're going to look at the Australian standard again, AS 1668 part two, and run through just some of the highlights, um, some of the main key points. Uh, there won't be enough time to run through the whole thing. Now, if we just scroll down quickly to this little transfer function. Now, this little drawing, this is almost exactly the same drawing that's in the Australian standard, and I've just drawn it out exactly as it is. So if you program your system exactly like this, then nobody can come back to you and say, look, you got a mistake, you know, redo your function description, redo your software, recommission your system. So if you program it exactly like this, you're not gonna have any comebacks when you rework. And the first thing I need to explain to you about how this works is on the x-axis here, there's two possible scenarios. So we have the non-staffed car park and the staffed car park. Now a staffed car park is um, if you, if there is somebody working in the basement car park. So when the standard was written, they were sort of referencing an example of a ticket attendant. Now we don't have ticket attendants anymore, we don't these are automatic boom gates, but um, sometimes we'd have a car wash down there where there's people washing cars. So if in the car park on the bond that you're working on, if there's anybody down there working there normally, they're always there, then you have to program the system using these values from the staffed car park. Most commercial offices, I think are non-staffed car parks you'd use these values here up to the 60 parts per million. But a good point to note here is that this is a question worth worth asking. So if you're doing a BMS upgrade and you're trying to do energy efficiency projects, you should ask the facility manager or the owner if it's a staffed or non-staffed car park and go have a look maybe. If you're in a new construction project, send in an RFI, a request for information and find out is this a staffed or a non-staffed car park because as you can see, the values are dramatically different. If you program in, using uh, the 30 parts per million for the staff car park, it will use a lot more power and energy than if you use the 60 parts per million on the non-staff car park. On the y-axis here, we have the car park exhaust fan speed. Now I'm describing it as exhaust fan speed, zero to 100, but it actually is the percentage of full ventilation rate. Um, so for the next few minutes, we'll talk about the fans going up to 100%, but actually how it would be is that when the mechanical commissioning technician did the balancing, and if he'd set up the whole system to be balanced with the um, the exhaust and then the supply makeup fans running to maintain the right pressure in the car park and the right ventilation rates, um, if the exhaust fan was running at say, you know, 95%, that was designed ventilation rate, then you would increase this up to 95%. So. This part here is just a description of you know the speed of the fan, but it's not exactly the fan speed. In a lot of cases, it will be the fan speed. So we can see here that as the maximum CO sensor increases above 15 parts per million, the VSD comes on and the fan runs at 25% ventilation rate. Let's call that minimum speed. And it sits at minimum speed until the maximum CO reading increases above 30 parts per million. Now, this is really important because between 15 and 30, the fan is just sitting at minimum speed. You're not doing anything. That's really energy efficient. It only starts to ramp up from 30 parts per million up to 45 parts per million. And then from 45 parts per million to 60, it just sits flat out or at the design speed. So that's really simple. And then the fan turns off when it goes below nine parts per million. Now in this little space over here, when the fan's not running, let's just check my notes up here quick. A minimum of one air change per 24 hours shall be provided. Confirm with the mechanical engineer the required runtime to achieve one air change. So if the system hasn't run for 24 hours, you're supposed to run the system for one complete air change. Of course, us BMS people, we don't know what an air change is or how much the air change is. But what I let me do is I just say, look, just put a time schedule in there that says that the plant runs for one hour if it hasn't run for 24 hours. That's just to meet the 
that um, requirement in the standard. The system shall be available 24 seven and not inhibited by a time schedule. Now, the standard doesn't say that. Um, I wrote that in there because the standard doesn't talk about a time schedule. So most um, functional descriptions will say that the car park system is enabled between a time schedule, an occupancy time schedule, and then in between that time schedule, it controls to the CO. Well, the standard doesn't talk about a time schedule. So you probably shouldn't have one. I don't think we should have time schedules anywhere in there um, to inhibit it running. I only actually realized this uh, recently, but uh, if a fault is detected, for example, a faulty CO sensor, then enable the system at full ventilation rate. So I guess in the olden days, we never had CO sensors. We had to run the car park ventilation system to design all the time. Uh, and just like the CO2 um, control strategy with the introduction of um, CO2 sensors, the same applies here with the introduction of CO sensors, we're now permitted to run the fan lower than design. If something goes wrong and your CO monitoring system is at fault, you've got to run it at full ventilation rate. So technically, I think to meet the standard there, if one of your CO sensors goes unreliable, you know, like a thousand parts per million, you probably should run the whole thing at full speed until it's rectified. Supply fan tracking, this is often quite wrong actually. If you think about this, uh, you know, the exhaust fans are running to control the CO in the zone and we're exhausting air out of the car park. So the supply fans, they're providing a makeup air into the car park. So there's a, a path for the air to go. Now, you can't run those two fans at the same speed because you need to maintain a negative pressure in the car park relative to the adjacent zones. If you run those fans at the same speed, um, then you might find that some of those car park exhaust fumes can drift into the adjacent tenancies like you know food courts or, or end of trip type things. So here's a few examples of things I copied out of a few FDs. The first one, the car park exhaust fan and car park supply fan will receive the same start stop command and speed command to ensure the airflow is balanced. Well, they should not get the same speed command. Uh, worst case scenario, I think that the supply fan should track the exhaust fan by 90% or something so that you're always exhausting more air and all the air from the adjacent tenancies is actually drifting into the car park in this negative pressure that you've created. Um, that same FD said, the fans on each floor are start when the building occupancy time schedule is active. Well, I don't think we should have a time schedule. It's not mentioned that you may have that in the standard. And the reading of the highest CO sensor on the floor exceeds 10 parts per million. Well, it's a lot more complicated than that. It's not just 10. We have a few different points on the x-axis where we run to you know, minimum speed and then ramp up. So that's not quite right. Second one. In this one, we're controlling the CO to eight parts per million. You know, a maximum allowable CO level at eight parts per million. Now, if we come back to here, on a non-staffed car park at eight parts million, it shouldn't be on at all. So on, on that particular job, we're gonna be running exhaust fans all day long when the standard doesn't even require it to be on at all at eight parts per million. So that's really like massive, massive waste of power. And the third one, um, when a group of fans are enabled, the exhaust fans VSD speed are modulated between 30% and 100% as the highest CO sensor signal varies between its low and high limits. The supply fan VSD speeds are matched to vary with the exhaust fans. That, that last bit's a bit wrong. But what we're doing here is we're controlling the speed of the fans between 10 parts per million and 20 parts per million. So at 20, we're at flat out, full speed, full ventilation rate. You know, at 20 percent, uh, sorry, at 20 parts per million, we should only have those exhaust fans running at minimum speed. Um, you know, so again, fans running at minimum speed are really efficient. Run that thing full speed for no reason isn't a good thing. So that's pretty simple. Um, I'm pretty sure that all of us would look at that transfer function and think that's the simplest thing in the whole world, but it is very seldomly programmed correctly in the BMS. When I do witnessing and I go to site, I know that you know 50 to 80% of the time, this will be wrong. Sometimes I see that the functional description, it actually has the words like non-staffed car park and staffed car park, and it talks about an exposure limit. These values here are called the exposure limits in the standard. 
So sometimes people are writing the FD, they've got, they've got an idea of what it says, but I still get to see these values being mixed up in the wrong way around, uh, still having mistakes. So this is an easy one to fix up. If you guys learned something in this short video, please like and subscribe to the channel and uh, leave a message in the comments below um, if you find this interesting and um, you learned something from it.